Hi class, today we're going to talk about 1.4b, which is um, 1.4 in general is solving quadratic equations and then eventually getting into the applications of solving quadratic equations. Okay, so essentially word problems that will require you to solve a quadratic equation. But when learning about um, solving quadratics, we did talk about 1.4a, which was how to solve quadratics using factoring. And so we already know that in order for us to solve quadratics using factoring, they have to look like this, then you factor it, and then you apply the zero factor property. However, there are two, there's one other way of um, solving quadratics, and that is called extracting roots. So you can also not just solve them by factoring, but you can solve them by extracting square roots, okay? Now, solving by completing the square is really just a greater part of solving by extracting square roots. Because once you learn what the extracting square roots um, rule is, you'll notice that a quadratic that looks like this won't be in the correct form to be able to extract roots. And so there has to be a process to turn this quadratic into a perfect square, okay? And that process is called completing the square, okay? So before we get to the more lengthy version of this section, completing the square, let's talk about extracting roots. What is that theorem and what does it tell us, okay? The theorem itself tells us that essentially, I'm gonna summarize here and then we'll go through the pages and explain everything they have there detailed. But what it's saying is that if you have u squared equal to a number, okay, where that number is positive, you can take the square root of both sides. And you would need to take the square root of both sides because the opposite of squaring something is taking the square root of it. So if you want the square to go away, you have to cancel it using a square root. So that will give you u all by itself. Now here's where the extracting roots formula comes in. When you do that to an equation that looks like this, you automatically will have two answers, the positive and the negative version of this square root of d. Okay, so once I know what that number is, I know I'll have two answers, okay? For instance, let's look at, um, let's pretend we know what D is. Let's pretend I know that D is four, okay? In the past, the only way we knew how to solve um, these equations, quadratic equations, right? It's got a square, is to first get them equal to zero. then to factor this, and it is the difference of squares, then to set each factor equal to zero. And so then you get your two solutions. Now notice that my solutions are negative two and positive two. Now, had I done the exact same problem, but using this extracting square roots um, rule, I would have taken the square root of both sides to get rid of this square, and I would have had u equal to plus or minus now the square root of four. And the square root of four is actually just a whole number two. So I get u equals plus or minus two. This is two answers with one notation. So it's positive two and negative two. And notice those are the exact same solutions that I got in when I did it by factoring, okay? Now, the big deal here is that you can only do this extraction of roots if you have an algebraic expression on this side being squared, meaning your variables can be over here on this side, but this should just be a real number. This should not have any x values in it at all, okay? No x's in this part of the expression. All your x's, all your variables need to be in this part of the expression to apply this um, rule. 
but you can see that you do get two solutions, regardless if you do it by factoring or if you do it by extracting the roots, okay? So this is just further them explaining that after they minus the D over, then they factor it using the um, difference of squares formula that you set each of those two factors equal to zero and one of them will give you the negative square root and the other one will give you the positive square root. And so one quick way of writing it, the same solution, it's the same number, just one with a plus and one with a minus, is to put this plus or minus sign. So it's plus or minus, okay? Meaning you have two answers, the positive and the negative. So here's your rule. Okay, when you have this equation, you're gonna have exactly two solutions and that's u equal to the square root of d and u equal to negative square root d, which can also be written as one equation like that. So we have some examples. Now, notice that it's an algebraic expression here, squared equal to a number. It has to be in that form in order for you to take the square root of both sides, okay? Now, this is not an algebraic expression squared. However, there's two ways I can handle that. They talk about one way, and there's a second way that you could do it as well. You could also write 4x squared as 2x being squared, okay? And I'll go over that in just a little bit. Okay, but here, the, what they do, and this is the one I prefer that you do. So I'm gonna do it the other way in case this is the route that your brain went. It can happen, but if that wasn't a four, if that was a five, I would not be able to do it this way, which is why we prefer for you to do it this way, okay? Plus, as I do my solution over here, you're gonna see that this is gonna be a little bit more lengthy than if you did it this way. So the suggestion is, is if you do have a coefficient in front of your algebraic expression squared, the easiest thing to do is just to divide both sides by that coefficient, okay? So in this instance, I would divide both sides by four. That would get rid of that four in the front and I would just have my algebraic expression squared all by itself. And then 12 divided by four is equal to three, okay? And then from here, you would take the square root of both sides essentially. And when you did that, um, that's where this plus and minus came from, okay? Because of the extracting roots rule. Now over here, if you recognize that, oh, that is an algebraic expression squared, it's actually two X squared, okay? Then you can go ahead and apply your square root on both sides. And so when you do that, you get just the expression without the square in the parentheses, but you get plus or minus the square root of 12, okay? Then you would have to divide by two on both sides to completely solve for x. And so you would get um, plus or minus the square root of 12 over a two. And I think that can be reduced to just square root of three because it's supposed to have the same solution, okay? Um, the square root of 12 is two square root of three. And so then this two will cancel, leaving me with just square root of three, okay? So like I said, this one's a little bit more lengthy, right? But you do end up with the same exact result so long as you're doing all of your steps correctly, okay? Now it does say you can check these in the original equation, okay? And so I like to use the programming capabilities of my calculator to check these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say square root of three, get out of the house, and then I'm gonna hit store um, X right here. And I'm gonna hit enter. So that way it saves X as this value square root of three. Then I'm gonna type in four X squared and I should get 12 when I hit enter. And I do. Now I'm gonna say negative square root of three. Get out of the house, store X. And I'm gonna go back up to that expression, 4x squared, hit enter to copy it, and then hit enter to plug in the new x value. And I still get 12. So this does check out. Both of those solutions do check out. 
So kind of jump this one. This one is similar, right? You've got the square. So the first thing you wanna do is take the square root of both sides. It's already in that format where you have something squared equal to a number. So when you do the square root, this and this and the parentheses too will all go away. But on this side, you get plus or minus the square root of seven. And then in order for you to solve for X, you do have to add three to both sides. And just FYI, when you have um, an integer and then a ration, irrational number, a number that doesn't reduce out of the radical, um, the formal way to write it is A plus B radical C, okay? That's the formal, it could be plus or minus. But you always wanna have your integer in the front and then you may have a coefficient in front of your radical. For instance, let's say I had three plus square root of 12. Well, we just saw that square root of 12 can be written as two square root of three, right? And so that's the format of this, okay? You have to have your integer in the front and then your radical term in the back, okay? It's just a formality. There is nothing wrong with saying plus or minus square root of seven plus three, because I added three on both sides, is my solution. This is the exact same thing. Same signs for square root of seven, same signs for the positive three. And you'll notice if you do put them in your calculator in the formal way that most books do, this calculator actually switches it back anyway. So I'm gonna do the positive three plus square root of seven. Your calculator will always try to simplify it in its exact form. Unless you hit the double arrow, then it'll put it in decimal form. So when I hit enter, it's the exact same expression because it doesn't simplify. Um, but notice that they do switch them the way most people probably would have written it, okay? The only reason why we, they avoid this notation is to avoid people that happen to draw lines on their houses a little too long. Because if you draw that line too long, it would look like the seven plus three was inside the radical. Whereas when you write it like this, there's no way you can misunderstand what's inside the radical because there's nothing else after that radical, okay? So that's the only reason why on paper, we usually like to write it like this, but this is the exact same thing, okay? Um, similarly with the minus, three minus square root of seven, if I hit enter, notice it puts the negative square root of seven in the front and the positive three in the back, okay? Those are equivalent. So now it says for me to check that into the original, okay? So I'm gonna go check it into the original. Let's use our calculator. So three plus square root of seven, get out of the house, store X. And then I'm gonna go, oops, I'm gonna go and type this in parentheses, x minus three, close parentheses, square, oops, square. And if I hit enter, I should get seven because that was the original equation, I do. Now three minus square root of seven, get out of the house, store x. I'm gonna go back up to that same expression and see if I get seven. I do, so they both check out as solutions. Okay. So remember we were just given this problem and we were asked to solve it, right? However, if you remember, we were not given equations that look like this. We were given equations that looked more like this, okay? And Believe it or not, this has the exact same solutions as this one, okay? Because they're equivalent equations. If you take this one over here and you actually multiply x minus three times x minus three, you get x squared minus three x minus three x plus nine. And then if you minus seven on both sides, and combine those, you'll get x squared minus 6x plus 2 equal to 0, which is the exact same equation. So these are the exact same, these two equations have the exact same solutions, okay? So if the solutions to this one look like this, then the solutions to that one look like that, okay? And why is that important 
that I am able, why is completing the score important? Why should it be important to turn this into something like that to solve it? Why could the question I get a lot is why couldn't I just use factoring? Since I already know a method to solve it, why couldn't I use that instead of trying to extract roots? Okay. And the answer is, is that when you factor, not every trinomial or every quadratic can be factored. Okay. And because not every single quadratic can be factored over the integers, um, how are we supposed to find solutions to equations of quadratics that cannot be factored, okay? This gives us a way to solve equations with quadratics that are not factorable. This problem here is not factorable. And if I were trying to solve it by factoring, I would get nowhere. No matter what I tried to do, it would not factor. You do AC, I get positive two. The only factors of two are one times two, that's it. And those are never going to add to give me negative six, never. Even if I make, if I make the two negative and the other one has to be negative as well to get a positive two, I'm only gonna get negative three. I'm not gonna get negative six. So according to the process of AC method, this is non-factorable, it's prime, right? That doesn't mean that there's no solutions. It just means they're not integer solutions. They may be weird solutions like this where you have a radical, okay? And it just so happens that this one does, right? So how do we turn that into that? right, so that we can extract roots, so that we have another method of solving quadratics under our belt, okay? This is the process to completing the square. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna get your expression to look like this. There cannot be a number in front of x squared, and there cannot be any constants with this. This has to be separated, okay? Once this is separated, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add b over two squared. So whatever this number is, sign and all, you're gonna take it over two squared. I've also seen people say one half times b squared. It's the same thing, okay? Just remember that b, any whole number is like saying that number over one. And then if you do multiply tops and multiply bottoms, you get b over two squared. So whichever version you're using of this expression is completely up to you. I usually use this version when I have a um, whole number, when this B value is a whole number, but when the B value is a fraction, it's easier to use this one, okay? Now, notice that it shows you what it's gonna factor into. It's going to look like something squared in the end. And notice what it looks like, it's X and then, plus or minus, depending on this value, okay? Whatever B over two was, whatever you get inside this parentheses, inside the parentheses is what will go here, okay? And if you are trying to complete the square in an equation, just remember that you have to add that value to both sides of the equation, not just one, okay? So here's a good example. It says, solve this one. It says X squared plus two X minus six by completing the square. So for this one, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to first get these two terms by themselves, okay? So we add six to both sides to do that. There is no number in front of X, so I'm good to go. All I have to do is one half of B squared. That's all I need to figure out right here. Um, and I can, as long as I can identify what B is. See, in this case, B is actually equal to a positive two. Remember, B is whatever's in front of X. A is what's in front of X squared. A, B, and then C is the constant. So I have one half times a positive two squared, which actually, if I put this over one, I'm gonna get positive two over two squared which is positive one squared, which is a positive one, okay? 
So what do they do? They add a positive one to both sides, okay? Both sides of the equation. And all it's letting you know is that that one is half of two squared, right? Didn't we do that? Half of two and then the whole thing squared. But what is this factor into? You can sit there and factor it if you want to. I seem to be missing a page. Um, yeah, you see, oh, here it is. Ooh. So here it is, they have factored it. Okay, and then the six plus one is where they got the seven from. But how did they factor that? Remember, whatever you had inside this parentheses, that's what goes in here. And if you recognize what we had inside the parentheses was a plus one. And so the, exactly that's what's there, plus one. The X will always be there because there were X's in here, right? That's the variable. The X will always be there, but what goes in there is from the inside of those parentheses. So once it's in this form, now you can do the extracting roots process where you take the square root of both sides. When the house and the square and the parentheses pop off, you have to put the plus or minus. And then in order to solve for X, you're gonna to have to subtract one on both sides. So you end up with X equal to that negative one in the front and then the plus or minus square root of seven, okay? So your two solutions are actually negative one plus square root of seven and then negative one minus square root of seven. And if your computer wants to know the decimals, you can type these in your calculator negative one plus square root of seven, but it will always give you the exact answer out. So make sure you always hit the double arrow so it can give you the decimal. So this is 1.646 rounded to three, then negative one minus square root of seven, hit the double arrow again, negative 3.646. So normally they always ask you to round to three decimal places, Pay attention if it does tell you to round so that you can round to the appropriate place value. Okay. So we've got our practice problems here that we're gonna cover. So the first one we're gonna do is, um, it's actually labeled number five in the notes and that's this problem here. So in order for me to solve this problem here, we're going to apply the square root on both sides. That's gonna give me X by itself, but because I put the square root in there, I'm gonna get plus or minus the square root of 81. And the square root of 81 does reduce down to nine. When you evaluate the square root, be sure not to put the square root symbol anymore. Notice that if I type it in the calculator, there's no more square root on it, okay? So don't keep the square root and then take the square root of nine again. I've seen some people do that quite too often. So please make sure you're not doing that. Once you evaluate the square root, stop writing the square root symbol, okay? Um, let's see, so that's number one. Now number two was number six on this sheet, but I'm gonna do it different. equal to two. So we can apply our square root from the beginning. We get x squared plus one without the square and without the parentheses, but we get plus or minus the square root of two. Then I'm gonna minus one on both sides. So I get x squared equal to negative one plus or minus square root of two in the formal way to write it. Then I'm gonna take square root again because I still have an X squared. I'll end up with X without the square. And then I'll end up with plus or minus the square root of negative one plus or minus the square root of two. Now, if you get this far, you have found the solution and it is correct and you're good. And although it looks really weird with these double square roots, it is what it is. You've done all of the mechanics of it correct, okay? 
However, I do want to spend a little minute on this, just a little bit, to explain something. One is most students will look at this and not be able to identify how many answers are there. You know, when you see this one, you've got two answers, right? X equal to positive nine and X equal to negative nine. But when it comes to this one, some folks might be baffled as to how many actual answers is that. If it only, if it, if the computer does not allow me to type in this plus or minus symbol, how would I enter my answers for this problem? If I were, couldn't type in the plus or minus symbol for this problem, it's not an issue. I would write positive nine comma negative nine. But for this one, it's a little bit less intuit, intuitive, okay? So here's what you gotta do to get all the combinations. You keep the plus and then just toggle between these two. Then we'll keep the minus and toggle between those two, okay? So first plus, I don't need to write plus, it's just positive, right? Negative one plus square root of two. I'm gonna keep the positive in the front again negative one minus square root of two. Then now I'm gonna use the negative. So negative square root of negative one plus square root of two, and then negative square root of negative one minus square root of two, okay? And so we actually have four solutions here, okay? Now, another thing I want to address is why does this equation have two solutions and this equation have four solutions? And the answer is due to the ultimate degree of the, po of the polynomial equation. So here there's only one term with x and it's x squared. So that means I'm gonna have two solutions. Here though, if I square x squared plus one, you're going to end up with x to the fourth plus x squared plus x squared plus one, which is x to the fourth plus two x squared plus one. Notice that here we have a power of four as the highest power. So the degree of this is actually a four, which is why there's four solutions, but it's not obvious, okay? So you have to be careful of all those little underlying um, scenarios, okay? So let's go ahead and move on to number three, but I'm definitely gonna need more paper. Okay, oops, not that one, this one. Here we go. So number three, we've got to solve this quadratic equation. First, by completing the square, because it's obviously not ready to do the extracting roots. Remember, for extracting roots, you need your expression in here squared equal to a number. That is not what I have here, okay? So this is the first example where we're gonna actually complete the square ourselves. So remember the first step. First step is to get your constant over to the other side, okay? So I have x squared minus 4x equal to 5. Then what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what 1 half of b squared is. Remember, b in this equation is what's in front of x, which is a negative 4. So we get 1 half times negative 4 squared, which is actually negative 2 squared. Okay, And negative 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to be adding four to both sides of this equation. Okay, so on the right-hand side, five plus four is pretty easy enough to do, right? On the left-hand side though, we've got to factor it. Now remember how it factors. Once if once you have it all good to go, it's got to be parentheses, parentheses squared, and an x. The only thing that you're going to figure out is what was in that parentheses is going to go in here. So in this case, it's actually going to be x and a negative 2 squared. Okay. So once you're here, you can extract the roots. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides that will force me to have a plus or minus answer. 
And the square root of nine is actually three. And so then if I add two to both sides, keep in mind that in this problem, um, three is a whole number, so it can combine with two. So you have to remember that this is a positive two plus three, and then a positive two minus three. And so you do get your two solutions, which are five and negative one, okay? And you could check those into your original to verify whether or not they are correct, okay? If we plug in five, oops, into x squared minus four x minus five, I should get zero, and I do. And then if I plug in negative one, I get zero again. So they do check out. Okay, now number four. So for number four, we've got um, 9x squared minus 6x minus 15. So this one's a good one because it has that number in front, okay? Now we do know that we have to move our constant over just like we did in the previous problem. In all of these problems that require completing the square. But this one has a number in the front of x squared. You cannot continue with that number in front. So I do have to divide every term by that number. And I end up with x squared. This reduces to 2 thirds. And then this reduces to 5 thirds. OK, you can type the fractions in your calculator. You can't type the letters, but you could type 6 over 9 in your calculator and hit Enter, and it will reduce it. And you can type 15 over 9 in your calculator, and it will reduce it, OK? Once we're here, we have to figure out what to add. So remember what you're adding, half of b squared. So in this case, b is a negative 2 thirds. So it would be 1 half times negative 2 thirds. And the 2s will cancel, leaving me with a negative 1 over 3 squared, which will end up giving me a positive 1 ninth. So the positive 1 ninth is what I will add. This will be used to factor, okay? So you do use both of those parts. So I'm going to have x squared minus 2 thirds x, and then I'm going to add 1 ninth to both sides. So then this should factor into x squared and then five over three plus one over nine is 16 over nine. And inside here, since it's a negative one third, it should be minus one third, okay? And if I keep solving this, we're gonna have to take the root and the root and let's see. That means we're gonna get x minus one third by itself, and then plus or minus the square root of this. Now the square root of 16 is four, and the square root of nine is three. Then I gotta keep solving for x, so I'm gonna to have to add one third. So I'm gonna get x equals to positive one third plus four thirds, and positive one third minus four thirds. So I get x equals to five thirds, and negative three thirds, which is the same thing as five thirds and negative one, okay? So this is what the solution is, and we've got to check it. Remember, we have to check five thirds and negative one into our original equation, okay? So this one up here, we're gonna plug it into that. So let's first do this in our calculator. Five over three, get to the side, stores x, and then I'm gonna type nine x squared minus six x minus 15. And I should get zero because that's what was over here on the right-hand side, okay? So if I hit enter, I do get zero. Now, if I plug in negative one into the same equation, 
I also get zero. So both of those check out. Now number five, we have x squared plus four x plus two equal to zero. So the first thing is to move the constant over. We do not have a number in front, so we do not need to divide. Um, I do need to figure out what one half of B is squared. So in this case, B equals a positive four. So I have one half times positive four squared, which is the same as positive two squared, which is the same as positive four. So I'm going to add four to both sides. So remember on this side, it's just a matter of computing. On this side, you're gonna use this number inside to factor it. So it'll be plus two squared. Then you're gonna take your square root. You get plus or minus the square root of two, and then you minus two. So you get negative two plus or minus square root of two which can be written as negative two plus square root of two or negative two minus square root of two. And if your computer wants a decimal, just type them in your calculator and hit the double arrow and it should give you the decimal representation. Oops, I forgot to put the double arrow. Okay, so 414 over here. Um, yep, that's it for that one. Now let's check them. So we have two answers to check into this original equation. Negative two plus square root of two, get out of the house, stores X. Then we're gonna type X squared plus four X plus two. We should get zero, we do. Now negative two minus square root of two. Oops. There's my delete button. There it is. Okay, now let me plug that in now that it's stored and we get zero. So both of them check out. Now, number six. Number six, I'm gonna leave to you guys as extra credit. So if you are um, in the face-to-face -face class, then there's an extra credit assignment inside Canvas already um, that you'll work on on Monday morning. But if you're um, in the online class, then you want to try to do this problem. So do not try to do it by factoring. You want to try to do this by extracting the roots, which will require you to complete the square. So the problem is solve the quadratic equation by completing the square and then extracting the roots. Okay. So just like number five, just like number five. Where did number five go? How rude. This is so strange. I'm working on a workbook and I have no idea where number five went. There it is. Okay, cool. So, just like this process, you've got to, it's actually more like number four. So you do have a good example with number four. Notice how it had a number in front. So follow that process, move your constant, divide everybody by the number, take the half of B, reduce that down, and then actually square it. The end result tells you what to add to both sides, but what you have here before you squared it is what will go inside the factoring portion, okay? Um, that might be a little bit better for you to see. There we go, much better. Um, and so then you'll be able to use that inside part 
to tell you how to factor it, okay? Then once you have it factored, uh, you can just do the extracting the roots part and keep going through that, okay? I think in this one, you probably will not end up with nice little numbers like that. You will probably end up with radicals. So kind of like number example five, where we ended up with radicals, but definitely try it. Um, once you're done doing this, um, you have until the day before the test. Um, to turn it in. And you're just going to text me two things. You can, or email, you can email it to me too. You're going to text me two things. You're going to text me um, what you get after completing the square. So it should look like something squared and then something else over here on this side. And then you're also going to text me um, or email me. And it's best if you just take a picture of whatever you did, um, but you could try to type it in there if, if you want to try to figure out how to type it in there. Um, but then the second thing I need to do is your actual solutions to the equation. So remember, once you're done completing the square, it's still an equation. You still haven't solved that equation. But after you solve the equation, do tell me what your solutions are, okay? So I need two pieces, what you get after completing the square, and then what you get as your final solutions, okay? So that will be extra credit. Um, and it will be due on the sixth, okay? But that is all I have for you guys today. Um, and I'll be recording the next one very soon. Thanks. Bye.